uh, it gives me immense pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Murlidharan sir, aka Mike. Um, so he has been helping uh, startups with uh, as as a mentor, uh, as an advisor. He is also uh, one of the senior investors in uh, in the Chennai Angels. Uh, he is a uh, he is an education panel mentor at Fiki. Um, he is a governing council member at Thai, and he is also an advisor at Anna University Incubation Foundation. So you can see if, through multiple initiatives. He has been helping startups to be successful. He is also very actively involved in helping the uh, the education industry uh, through uh, as a chairman um, for Etheridge College for Women. He is also a committee member, planning and development for Madras University, um, and and he also uh, is um, is a successful CEO at uh, Bahuwan Cybertech uh, on digital transformation. He is also actively helping humanities to, to save lives during emergencies. As chairman of Alert, uh, it's an NGO, and then uh, he's also a veteran in executing, managing, and scaling multiple uh, companies. So as you can see, the, it's it's a it's a uh, unique and a deep skill set uh, that we have that we see uh, in in. in <coughs> so what I am uh, basically you know the thinking is that um, he has ex he has expertise in all throughout the, the journey, right? Uh, right from is 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 a part of governing councils in in colleges. He is also um, a, a decision maker in multiple initiatives, startup related initiatives. He is also a such successful uh, uh, entrepreneur. So I was thinking that this session, this fireside chat, will uh, will help uh, a lot for the for the founders to get get this uh, this distilled uh, you know, expertise in, in among amongst ourselves today. And um, Bonnie will be doing a fire set uh, today. And welcome, Murli Dharan, sir, to our session. It was, it was uh, great. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank actually. you very much. Yes. Yeah. So, Bonnie, take it over and please please go ahead. Thank you, Sonal, for the wonderful introduction. Thank, Thank you very uh, much, sir. Uh, Bonnie, and uh, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let me, uh, I, I was uh, part, uh, for the last 15, 20 minutes, I have been seeing what uh, you've been discussing with your, I would say they are the heroes, heroes of the day. Uh, I always, uh, what do you call, have great respect for uh, founders because they have jumped into something uh, which many people are scared to jump into and uh, they're so fortunate to have FI, uh, what do you call, uh, burning that, uh, I mean, adding uh, additional oil to that fire that they already have. Anyway, thanks a lot for inviting me. Yes, Bonnie, shoot. It's a, always a pleasure to have you, sir. I'm really excited to interact with you. Um, welcome once again. And uh, let's start, sir. Uh, so you have been uh, right uh, seeing your uh, career right from your childhood, starting from St. Beats, then Loyola, then uh, College of Engineering. Then you worked with uh, big uh, corporates like Vipro, HCL. And uh, you had uh, with, been with right from your childhood, you had been always with uh, big names. And suddenly you took the plunge of uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, that too, uh, uh, during the dot com bubble, uh, all that uh, dot com bubble uh, scenario. So, how did that happen and uh, how did that clinch happen? So, first things first, I think I was not part of big names. The names are big today. When I joined oh. Wipro, in fact, those days, few names were not there, few things were not there. There was no name called Startup. There was no name called uh, angel funding, venture capitalist. All these things were not there. It was, it was, Wipro was a startup. When I was uh, in the Wipro, the year 1983, the turnover was 6.3 crores. And the previous year, it, uh, it was about 40 lakhs, 39 lakhs or something like that. So that, I mean, I think I have seen an organization which is, which grew from that level to around 80 to 100 crores when I moved to HCL. Even then, HCL was about 100 odd crores or whatever it is. So companies were not very big those days. So we worked, I worked almost in startups. The, the, the dream of making things big was always there. And of course, uh, around, that, uh, around 2000, yes, uh, the idea of uh, what do you call doing something on your own. I mean, because in your, in the, the IT industry was always what you call moving from a technology to another technology, nothing was always, always something was new. So you tend to, tended to believe that, okay, why don't you sail uh, in, the, in that type of an exciting boat? 
and one got into that and that's how it moved on yeah thank you sir so uh, as an entrepreneur uh, uh, you would have faced a uh, lot of challenges also you would have seen some success so how, how did you uh, treat uh, those two imposters when you had success or when you had challenges how did you manage those things are you able to treat them equally or uh, you had some uh, severe uh, challenges addressing failures or something like that see uh, failures are something which you should never uh, be uh, fearing about uh, if you have that fear you can never be an entrepreneur it's as simple as that i mean i would put it this way if you look at a sport uh, at least in a in a way i i always have enjoyed sports and uh, when you when you when you play a sport you have so many chances of losing i always say when you play a game of chess you can never win that board if you don't lose a single pawn in as a child you learn that when a kid you play uh, chess with for the first few games kid will be so upset because you're cutting coins and will even push the board uh, the coins away and say you're cheating me that is when you learn that you need to be ready to accept failures to win the bigger game so that is something which is always going to be there so the people who fear failures don't go to the next step if you are able to just just sit back be calm think about what could have gone wrong you take the right step move forward i think every failure in my opinion there's nothing called a very big failure a big failure means you can come back again the famous statement kabali madri thirumbi vandittu nu sollu varalam it's possible provided you just think nothing is beyond you and i could see some of the conversations that people had i think that is the thing that fi has instilled in them somewhere they feel that the confidence is coming out the confidence is not about succeeding the confidence is that when we probably have a setback we will morph and move forward and that's something which i have seen all along i mean in especially in it industry i think when you think you knew everything there's something new coming which is always like attempting an uh, out of syllabus question it's always the case okay sir having spoken about failures uh, see, uh we tend to see uh, silicon valley as a startup hub or as a role model for startup accelerations so uh, mm. generally the feeling is in silicon valley star- failures in startups are celebrated founders who fail are celebrated and they are given more opportunities whereas culturally in india uh, failures or someone who has failed as is is being seen as someone who is outcast or someone uh, who is not worth worth it or something like that so do you think this scenario is changing in uh, our startup ecosystem or if it is not what can be done to improve uh, this mindset i'll tell you it it's born out of culture so it's not like you you, you cannot change it in fact the first step is we have to change i have to change if i understand a person who failed as having had an experience which will give him that confidence to face any failure and move forward I, i'll tell you i would have made that small step and when a group of people today i i saw kumaran mani is a phenomenal entrepreneur i mean people like that who who have seen life right through would know that it's not a, i mean when you succeed no we all look up and say he's a great success without realizing how many thorny bushes he's come come, come past that never gets actually uh, what do you call uh, shown in fact it's almost the case right through i mean uh, simple thing i'll tell you if you look at any uh, uh, prem ji or narayana murthy or somebody you would always state that okay the moment you talk about what do you feel about them in i, I when i address some sessions we ask they'll say great visionary phenomenal uh, far sighted uh, person and uh, he takes lot of uh, risks etc etc you get the best adjectives and fit it into them because you see them successful you might not know about somebody who's not succeeded as much but probably been much more brilliant might not have had the opportunity you get it no so success always gets those adjectives and we don't realize what paths they went through so i'm sh- I-, i always believe that 
it's never a better of roses but i'll tell you something one has to enjoy i mean uh, as long as uh, uh, what do you call if you go to the gym if you think you should not have pain i don't think you can uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, have any gain out of it absolutely very well said sir uh, coming uh, to the opportunity this is available uh, you have been uh, part of uh, uh, digital transformation journey so in this uh, field of digital transformation what kind of opportunities do you foresee for startups to uh, take uh when 5 6 years back when I, when i used to see uh, startups presenting in spite of having been i mean it industry gives more opportunities to look at something new all the life all your life i mean 15 years back if uh, probably uh, mark had uh, told that i have this facebook this is a startup and all of you guys will be talking through my forum i think most people would have laughed at it it's not a, and i'll tell you something uh, it's a that that visualization will come from somebody who sees something ahead in fact i still remember uh, it's it just baffles me that in india uh, i'm in a place like india where i would say we were behind in technology we have always been far ahead in being imaginative that's an ability that, that we should retain as early as i think that's uh, that's a thing which should have gone across uh, in whatsapp but all what not uh, as early as 1960 maya bazar was a movie in which uh, jamini ganeshan and uh, savitri will go to see to, through a magic uh, a mirror it was like a laptop and it would have looked it would have seemed a fantasy which is never possible ever but today that's what we are doing right now we could imagine how it will be 50 60 years later in 1960 and 1998 there was this movie called uh, genes in which aishwarya rai was rendered as a, a 3d image on stage and there was a physical form two aishwarya rai's dancing and that looked like okay some type of an uh, what do you call a imagination but in 2006 i was zapped to see the uh, tele presence that uh, cisco where john chambers was in delhi and his number 2 or number 3 was in uh, west coast in uh, 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 america he was on stage he was rendered from there on stage here except for a cup of coffee and shaking hands they did everything walking around the stage now what i am saying is that imagination is what i see in these seven or probably even the 25 would have had it but these seven i think all of these people would have ideas and that idea to action is what sorry i mean oh uh, yeah okay sorry yes. so yeah so the the phenomenal thing that we have as as a race is this but the problem is coming to your question that will we accept failures in fact uh, i saw i think it was lakshmi uh, whom you call lakshmi murthy who said about we shouldn't assume i do not know most idea are born out of assumptions an assumption that this is possible and none of us when we as investors listen to them we are not able to see that because we don't know how it will pan out but facebook did pan out and ola or uber where nobody wants even a single vehicle has panned out but at the at the stage when it was ideated in a drawing board scenario i, would, I many people would have criticized that i think it's 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 a it's a it's a situ- it's a thing where we all have to participate Uh, all of us who have been in the system should accept failures then we'll see many people joining and saying oh yeah we thought it will be a failure this guy's may, uh, what do you call grow, uh, become a unicorn and if five unicorns who were criticized earlier become unicorns then the rest of them will fall we'll start understanding that and when you listen to that those unicorns saying this was my failure that was my failure then people understand failure should not be uh, what do you call that value should not be lost 
okay sir so uh, one point which i take is uh, so today's fiction is tomorrow's reality so that is what uh, in terms of digital marketing you are uh, you are saying that is what mm. i understand uh, from what you are saying so uh, in another uh, sector uh, you have been part of uh, the governing council or advisory board of several educational panels right from anna university madras university so uh, there are a lot of disruptions happening in the educational industry especially uh, after the uh, covid i mean uh, we have uh, byju's uh, startups like byju's uh, growing up in a large scale and acquiring a traditional company like akash uh, so uh, what opportunities do you see uh, uh, for in e learning or in educational sector uh, where startups can uh, get find some opportunities no it's definitely a great opportunity it depends on see i'll tell you something when uh, i mean uh, coming to uh, this thing where when we evaluate a, a, a startup as to what will what we can see as a value in which one should uh, put in money or even encourage there are two very very important ingredients the first most important ingredient is the founder the team they should actually have one person can have all strengths or few people can have complementary strengths but it it needs in fact ideally it should be a team because then it gives a lot of comfort that okay they can rub off on each other human beings require that okay the second ingredient is that idea right but more important than the, these two is that what is the execution plan because you ideas are too many in fact many times i would i have seen people with so brilliant ideas but then they are not very clear as to how to execute it if that is actually what you call uh, uh, missing however good the idea is uh, i think it's it's not worth uh, any penny in fact uh, uh it, it you you you'd see it in any walk of life there are many times i mean people would say uh, if if only i i could have been given that opportunity i would have done that it's not like that you know why people don't get into that because there's a, fa- a fear of failure or sometimes the idea will be highly what you call uh, f- uh, fantasized with no plan to execute if somebody says that okay i'll have a drone fantastic but then no you have to put the pieces together you should know what is it that you want do you want to to uh, use it for agriculture for a spraying uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the pesticides or do you want to use uh, it with the camera for surveying something you should have a use case and a complete clarity from end to end what you're going to do and then attempt that otherwise i mean it will be it will be what you call bits and pieces but uh, it will not give the you, even you will not be confident you will be probably wanting to just put it as a piece of paper tell people yeah i have fantastic ideas but if i had been lucky i would have been successful but if you go if you want to be successful you will have it put across on a what do you call a proper deck see the pit flaws pit faults in the whole thing correct the flaws and then come out with that and probably those are the areas where when when you have 80 90% or 60 70% also ready Uh, 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 what do you call a forum like a fi can greatly help thank you sir so i uh, understand that uh, uh, founders or entrepreneurs should take the plunge instead of uh, just uh, waiting for someone to push them so that is the whole point which you, you are uh, trying when I mean, you are saying uh, so uh, moving to the another sector uh, another area which you are actively involved is uh, social uh, circle you are uh, actually involved in alert uh, something which is very unique uh, helping people in case of emergencies um, so a lot of uh, today a lot of uh, people are uh, into uh, uh, these kind of activities and a uh, lot of ngos are coming on own hand and other than there are a lot of csr funds available so uh, do you think uh, these csr funds are uh, properly executed or properly used or is there any opportunities for startups to uh, help uh, or connect ngos and CC, uh, csr funds uh, so that they can be managed effectively 
absolutely in fact i'll tell you something uh, an ngo while it is non profit uh, organizations if it has to function well it has to work like a corporate it can never be lip service you cannot say ngo is a voluntary thing therefore if i do this much it is enough if you are not serious you should never be in an ngo if you are not serious you should not take responsibility in fact in an ngo yes it may not be great uh, it uh, i mean all of us who uh, especially run it at a management level uh, trustees we are all definitely honorary but then the people who work as a employee but with a good heart to uh, support any good cause they also have families they also have uh, the reasons to uh, the, the survival uh, reasons so we should make sure that they are comfortable on that but definitely they should give their heart and soul to make the uh, the whatever cost that may be that ngo is uh, having as a mission should be successful very interestingly you talked about alert as an ngo yes this is, is probably so unique compared to many other uh, ngos many ngos would probably be su supplying food to people who uh, are economically backward so you know you collect the ingredients cook it and give it to somebody or you may have an elders home where you probably house about 100 elders and you know that these are the people whom we support or probably children who are uh, what do you call uh, not having uh, any uh, support uh, we also have uh, homes for that but here the people in fact uh, dr kalam was a person great man that he is gave that uh, this thing that to help a person who is needing support in an emergency could be an accident could be a heart attack could be anything for that matter should be a volunteer and he should be available locally there you cannot have in annanagar 100 people ready to help but all the problems happening in hitruvan we or adiyar uh, mandavali etc because there's no point it should be everywhere and then he said if you have it if you must have everywhere train at least once in a family one in a family so which means every house will have somebody which means anywhere there's a problem it will be i mean to cut the story short that's the thing but more importantly yes we have been training we have trained one and a half lakh people so far but at this point in time if you look at it very uniquely the volunteers who get trained do not know who is the beneficiary you don't know whom you are going to uh, give uh, you, you, food you know whom you are going to give education you know which kid you are going to elders you are going to you know who, uh, who are the elders whom you are going to support but here it could be an absolute stranger somewhere in the world wherever you are at that point in time in a train in a road in an apartment complex in a playground or in a anywhere factory if somebody has a problem there should be somebody to help so this is what it is and coming to the next thing the role of an entrepreneur i would right now say for an entrepreneur to take that as a initiative it may not be extremely lucrative the point is he can bridge in terms of getting the right ngos to the right source of this thing for a small fee in between you get it some things like that can be done but when it comes to uh what do you call the unicorns this will not be the type of thing that one can get into in fact i would say a successful entrepreneur should contribute something even in technology and areas like that for uh, ngos and uh, i would i would put it that way because i always feel sometimes people say can i become a social entrepreneur it's a nice word but then they should understand also the whole thing is here money is going to be a little sparse and people would not want you to uh, what do you call spend money for everything so there will be a bit of a gap yeah thank you sir so uh, uh, see you are being part of several uh, initiatives on one side you are uh, see you have a big company on the other hand you are part of several uh, panels uh, educational panels you are part of tai for an investor in chennai angels you are part of an ngo 
So how do you manage time? Uh, managing time is something very critical for entrepreneurs and many find it uh, challenging. And uh, seeing your credentials and uh, you have been into a lot of uh, things and how do you manage time and what advice would you give for the entrepreneurs, especially startup entrepreneurs in managing time? It's not for entrepreneurs, it's for all the people. I always tell my own colleagues anywhere. I'll tell you predominantly what happens is uh, I always feel uh, there are people who are much more uh, taxed for time compared to me. First thing is I look up and say, oh, how are they managing time? So it's only relative. I think everybody looks at somebody else and say, how is he managing time? My simple thing is I have realized in life over a period of time that if there are 20 decisions to be taken, which comes, comes to your table, I have realized 18, you can decide yes or no very easily. Not 18, at least 15. Invariably, what happens is when you don't have too much of uh, work, you tend to think a lot before saying yes or no to something. And if you look at it after five days, when you look back, why did you spend five days? You will realize you could have told that same yes or no on the first day. So what happens is, whether it is office work or whether it is the NGO or whether it is any other thing, I always decide very quickly and say yes or no to about 75% or 80% of the things. There will be five more of which about three or four may require a little bit of application of mind and possibly at 24 hours and say yes or no. There'll be only one or two, which will probably require a meeting, discussion, everyone, all that. And that's something different. So invariably, you know, what happens is, uh, I don't know. I have made it as a habit. And out of that 80, out of the 16 decisions, 15 decisions that I've said yes or no, one or two could still be wrong. But I've realized one thing. I, even after thinking for 10 days, when I decide I make such mistakes. So I will make the mistake quickly so that you have more time to work on other things. I think this is applicable not for entrepreneurs, for everything, because invariably we spend too much of time uh, dis uh, deciding on something which is not worth spending so much time. Okay, that was so insightful, sir. So we'll try to practice that. This is what I practice. So uh, uh, this is something which many people ask, and this is what I practice. Okay. So uh, you are part of uh, actively uh, part of uh, Thai uh, Chennai Angels as an investor. So what kind of uh, opportunities you see for uh, entrepreneurs or startups in, in the Chennai ecosystem? So how can no, no, uh, I'll tell you all the all the what you call uh, uh, startups? In my opinion, I'll tell you I value every startup, every founder because. It is like uh, probably, I mean, I would say that if you see a new young cricketer like Venkatesh Raya coming in or uh, Ishan Kishan coming, they may look like they're playing the first match. The coach can feel, uh, when I'm saying coach, it could be FI, it could be Chennai Angels, it could be Thai, which could be people like me who have spent a lot of time thinking I know better. But I'll tell you something, the guy who's going to play the game on the ground is that founder. And he's got his passion. He is much more concerned about his success than you and me. So I really respect that. Right? So when I, when, what, I, what I would say is that, as I told you, the two ingredients should be very, very good. The idea and the founders. If that is good, what all of us do, or FI type of people, the forums do, is give them what you call that support to cook it up well, correct the, uh, what you call rough edges. Sometimes I'll tell you, the founders will be very passionate about an idea, but then the idea may be a little off, very difficult for them to take a no or a take a, what you call a slightly negative thing. Many times, I mean, uh, you one, may, one will have to morph an idea without naming. I knew about uh, probably 10 years back, there were some chain of uh, stores selling uh, white goods and uh, it looked like that will go probably to 1000 stores or 2000 stores in about uh, uh, three, four, five years. In came Amazon and the flip cards of the world and it got hurt. Now the problem is, was the founder's idea wrong? No, but there is a competition coming from somewhere, not you, where you think. It is not like somebody opened more stores. It is some other avenue. The yellow cabs were there. 
and suddenly uh, was the what do you call the uh, fast track and uh, those type of cabs came and they were suffering and suddenly the olas and the uber came and the fast track started suffering so these are all going to be there so point is some if the if the team and the idea is very strong and the execution strategy is very good i am telling you when they come and pitch in front of a, what do you call an investor it could be uh, chennai angels or it could be any investors for that matter it will appeal and again i am telling you there are times when i found that we have missed an opportunity saying that it's not a great idea three months later it, it was successful somebody invested and then he said oh yeah we said no to it but now somebody is uh, invested no i'll tell you he, the, the, uh, what do you call if your idea is if you are very very strongly you believe in that idea and if you pitch it right also then i think you will definitely get your funding a good idea will never go for a waste it is like however backward a state or a city a town from which dhoni came he cannot be stopped because he could not be stopped because there was talent it might take one or two what do you call uh, suspicious selectors who may think oh, can he play from that particular part of the uh, country but yes great talent can never be stopped great ideas great founders can never be stopped so far from an investor perspective or as an investor yourself so what uh, kind of uh, uh, attributes do you expect in a startup or a founder hello my first thing is founders the team should uh, what do you call invoke con- uh, show that uh, get the confidence from investors if if they are absolutely clear about uh, i mean that will automatically happen if the founders uh, see again one thing unlike what you call uh, physics chemistry or uh, maths uh, entrepreneurship is not taught it's uh, i in the sense a startup founder i mean i could listen to any of them they are all absolutely passionate maybe Uh, if i would have helped them what do you call cut those uh, uh, rough edges but otherwise no i think the key thing is that fire in the belly that was another word used yes absolutely unless and you will you will not give up unless you really are proved wrong and the second thing is that idea should be good in fact what should be in fact uh, many times on a on a what do you call a forum like this people get make it questioned as to why is this idea will fail and that's the best forum where the founders should what you call argue and prove why it will succeed it's not for anything else at the end of it you, we all want them to succeed i mean uh, there would have been a time when uh, uh, reverse sweep would have been uh, shouted at by the coach today every coach wants to teach reverse sweep the first guy who did that would have been admonished when he came back to the uh, pavilion i mean today we are looking for a reverse sweep shot and we are admiring i mean i know when i played cricket if you hit the ball few inches above the ground the coach will say malathu kedigriya it's not acceptable and when uh, what do you call a chika uh, uh, started first in terms of lofting it was not looking nice but then thankfully the one day has came and then that became that was uh, that was uh, that was an innovation what was looking uh, as a uh, brush shot became an innovation so i think uh, we have to make the founders uh, hone their uh, deck make sure that the success story to their own selves look real they should not look for somebody to say i am presenting to you if you support me i may make it big no i am confident of making it big with or without you so ultimately it is about the fire in the belly so that is you know, what uh, you are saying okay sir so now coming to uh, another perspective of uh, your uh, journey uh, you come up from a family which supported women education right uh, from the 1940s uh, which is absolutely amazing so in the early 90 i mean yeah, immediately after india got independence your uh, family started ethra college for especially for women so uh, so today i am sure women has come a long way uh, in the last 50 60 years like due uh, to contributions uh, like uh, ethraj family and so on so today uh, there is a lot of talk about women entrepreneurs women startups 
So uh, what opportunities do you see for women entrepreneurs, especially, uh, uh, especially from a background uh, like uh, your family who has helped women uh, uh, for the past five, uh, five to six decades? So what kind of opportunities or what advice do you have for women entrepreneurs? First thing, I don't see women entrepreneurs. They're only entrepreneurs. I'm very clear about it. I think, uh, and on a slightly different note, due to many reasons of flexible work option, I used to see in the college and outside as well that women were more interested in becoming entrepreneurs because it offered them a flexibility. If I do something at home or uh, for a, probably a 10 to 4, 10 to 3 and do something and then possibly uh, I can have a flexible time because there was no work from home option today we are all forced to be, have work from home options we were actually thinking work from home is in discipline no more it is second thing is we also did not have a part-time option today i'm so women were jumping into it but and one more thing is uh, let's face it i think uh, more than the rest of the world i think in india women did many things uh, at home compared to the men uh, I mean, the, the, so the, the, it was a little natural for them to switch between things. Okay. So I feel entrepreneurs are there. No women entrepreneurs. I think that's a bad word. Okay. So opportunity of humongous and they will complete, compete man to man in whatever uh, a man does also. I, I don't see uh, this thing. And uh, definitely I think, I hope, I, I, I did not know that. I, I think there were one or two women also in this, uh, I could just browse on the names. I, I am sure that uh, they will not uh, want to be called women entrepreneurs. They will be an entrepreneurs and they'll be very successful. Thank you, sir. That is a great uh, perspective. Thank you very much. So, uh, so uh, on a uh, final note, uh, so uh, we are uh, here in at Founder Institute helping startups build, uh, uh, helping startups to uh, build uh, technology companies. So, what kind of advice would you give uh, uh, to build this ecosystem uh, in Chennai or in general? So, to build up a startup ecosystem, what kind of advice would you give? No, no, I'll tell you, uh, I think uh, from whatever I could see, first of all, one thing is even the founders, many times, I mean, I, I, I can, I, it's a good thing that uh, the founders, well, uh, this is a private type of, a, what do you call a forum. Uh, Anna University Incubation Center is a, uh, what do you call a university forum. Whatever said and done, a founder also should feel like seeking some type of a support. I would never advise, even my own children, I will never advise if they do not seek. Because I'll tell you something, I first feel that the entrepreneurs are the heroes, as I told you. And if they say, uh, can you please, if somebody tells me, Mike, can you, uh, what do you call, hear me out? And probably if you think that you can see some spaces where I need some corrections, would you be willing to tell me? I would tell. Uh, even if I see somebody doing something, and if, if my mind tells me, my, my wisdom tells me that it could be slightly different, I would never stay unless asked. Because I feel that that is his, what do you call, baby. And he would know best. And I'm telling you, with due regards, no entrepreneur, even if when I was an entrepreneur, I will not want to be criticized unless I seek to be criticized. And that's number one. Number two is, uh, I think these forums uh, are definitely, what do you call, very interesting. I did not know about FI till I, we got connected uh, last week. Okay. It's very interesting because I, I know that some of these uh, universities and colleges and some of those people have, and uh, IIT has and all that. But this is fantastic. It's somewhere where a founder does not know where to go and seek. It gives a very different type of a board uh, decision uh, or a debate or uh, something which is phenomenally good. Uh, that itself is uh, taking us, uh, these are the small steps which I think should pro proliferate. One FI is not sufficient. There should be many more which should help the founders. And I'm telling you, what, Probably uh, even four or five years back, we would have had probably across the country, maybe 1,000 uh, startups. Now we probably have 50,000 startups. It's a great sign. And uh, 
which which also and i one more thing i'm telling you you talked about failures no startup founder would be a failure in life because the experience that is got would make him such a responsible person i mean he can do wonders even if he supports another company in fact i always feel that uh, in colleges i used to say in an entrepreneur cell people will start so let me say in the first year there are 50 students who start uh, joining the club by the third or fourth year there will be only five or six people who are continuing and being uh, wanting to do and when they go, go out maybe one or two will become entrepreneurs but all these people who went through that exercise of entrepreneurship when they go for a job they are much more successful because they don't look at it from a job or a task perspective they look at it much more holistically they look at it how to become more be more responsible they behave like entrepreneurs in a small way which is a very good uh, ability for an organization i would prefer somebody who is like an entrepreneur even if it's a new as a student who is coming and joining my company thank you sir thank you uh, thank you for sharing your valuable insights now uh, we have kumaran mani uh, as a special question to you what do you oh, mean yeah. no 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 always uh, high energy mike sir so, so thank you for uh, coming and joining and blessing this beautiful day for us you know <laughs> no no so, I, i'll tell you i'll tell you you preceded me in setting some of those things i was there for about 15 minutes listening to you as well very very nice you know see for all the founders uh, i know mike sir's personal journey he's like a anywhere anytime giving man you know so part of all those great things see many people run businesses uh they look for profits and and they grow it and maybe they make it ipo uh, it's not wrong but there are some people uh, you know who also do the other things so always mike sir has been an inspiration for all the so called social entrepreneurs you know so whoever wants to give their time knowledge money network whatever so uh, sir you are time and guidance for these founders who are starting their uh, graduated journey as to say you know we we seek from you uh, uh you know they are all from humble backgrounds uh, so so you know i think your participation and continuous guidance will be very helpful sir uh, thank you thank you most. more than questions i think the biggest connect i can make uh, on this day is the founders continue to have your guidance thank you again definitely definitely uh, comrade i uh, i mean it will be my pleasure thank you thank yeah, you just just wanted to add kumaran that you know um, i was trying to uh, get a hold of murlidharan sir through uh, chandran sir and then uh, um, right now i am kind of you know after hearing the wisdom from his his own words i am kind of assuming that i am grateful to the moment that he took that decision you know to uh, to say yes to our uh, uh, our event and then you are you are able to be here and bless us with all the the insights that that you just shared so very thankful to murlidharan sir and look forward to all the future initiatives doing together thank you so much fantastic fantastic